practical session of social sciences shortly. All participants are kindly requested to keep their mobile phones muted throughout the session. Of management, social sciences and humanities of General Sir John Kotalawala Defence University, we welcome you all to the first parallel technical session on social sciences of the 16th International Research Conference under the theme Achieving Resilience Through Digitalization, Sustainability and Sectoral Transformation. Ladies and gentlemen, this session will be chaired by Emeritus Professor Nihal Pereira. We would like to invite the chair, Emeritus Professor Nihal Pereira, the rapporteur, Dr. Lakshika Lianage, and the presenters to their respective seats. Giving a brief introduction of the chairperson of this session, Emeritus Professor Nihal Pereira. Professor Nihal Pereira is Emeritus Professor of Urban Planning at Ball State University in USA. He founded the Cap Asia Foundation in 1998, which is a field study program in South Asia and currently holds the director position in the foundation. He obtained his PhD from the State University of New York and has studied at the University College London MIT and the University of Moratua, Sri Lanka. His honors include a Fulbright Scholar Award. He has been a visiting scholar at the National University of Singapore, Hong Kong Baptist University, CEPT University in Ahmedabad, India, and University of Moratua, Sri Lanka. Professor Nihal Pereira has more than 20 years of research experience, mainly focusing on community and national development, social justice, qualitative methods, and the social production of space. Studying spaces across China, Hong Kong, India, Indonesia, Malaysia, Myanmar, Sri Lanka, Uzbekistan, and Asia in general. He maps out how ordinary people produce spaces for their daily activities and cultural practices. So familiarizing environments, neighborhoods, and cities. Sir, we cordially invite you to commence the session. Over to you, sir. The one they mentioned, I will chair this session. Uh, <laughs> so, no, 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 no. There's so many things that I, that I, I, I have to. <laughs> uh, so, uh, my, my basic thing is to kind of like keep this going. I think it's pretty late right now. So, I'll try to. Uh, help the, the presenters as much as possible, right? So uh, the, the rules of the game is uh, you're given 15 minutes and I have a bell here. And after you are done for about 12 minutes, I'll just ring a bell. You know, um, I usually don't do this, but, but I'll do that, then, then you will know. And when you're done, like 15 minutes, I'll ring, ring the bell twice. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to be so scared. You know, um, I, I, I don't belong to the military or something like that. So, so if you have to finish another sentence or two, you can do it, OK? So, so please, you know, uh, be comfortable, because we want you to present your case, all right? So, uh, but this is a guide, OK? So it's a, it's a, it's a guide. So uh, let's start then. Uh, <coughs> uh, the first presenter is, uh, TKGIL Ranasinghe from uh, uh, the Faculty of Arts uh, at the University of uh, Colombo. Uh, uh, she'll talk about female visionary leaders for development. <coughs> uh, a sociological readings, reading on, on the importance versus reality of gender development and state uh, Gender Development and State University Education in Sri Lanka. It's a long one, uh, but I'm sure she'll explain. Please. Uh, 
you can hear me. Uh, so, nine five. Okay, uh, I'm Lavangi uh, Lansina. So I'm a, a master's uh, master of arts student uh, at Columbia University. So today, a topic for my presentation is uh, this is my master's study. So uh, female visionary leaders for development, a sociological reading on it's uh, it's important and what's what uh, uh, reality. Uh, and how it connects with uh, development and state university education in the country. So uh, outline for the presentation is uh, research background, uh, methodology, theoretical framework, discussion, and then I will conclude the session. So when it comes to research background, uh, uh, gender uh, asymmetry can be seen in uh, many fields. So uh, uh, even in education, training, professional work, not, in, not only in uh, developing countries, this can be sometimes seen in developed countries either. So, uh, but when it comes to uh, comparison uh, within the region, Sri Lanka shows uh, better, better rates. Uh, and then when it comes to the, uh, the overall idea about development, develop, there are many definitions for development, many aspects of development, many approaches to development. But when it comes to the development, the basic essence uh, uh, that, ha that has been grown, like that has been like discussed today is like it's more about um, uh, having a better life for everyone. It's not just about our GDP. It's not just about uh, like economic factors. It's about uh, overall uh, holistic approach, and it's like giving freedom for people. So I, I'm basically thinking of freedom of people because I have used as uh, uh, Amalta Sainz's um, uh, approach. Uh, in uh, explaining what is development and what's the application of that in a real mm -hmm. society. So when it comes to state university, uh, it has been doing a significant contribution in the country towards uh, ensuring equality in education. And also we have challenges, especially, uh, our, especially with regard to quality uh, and um, how we face global advancements. And um, when it comes to the uh, nature of uh, female inclusion uh, in state universities. So uh, it's like not, not only in universities, but when it comes to broader society, uh, when it comes to uh, female's inclusion, it's varied. It's varied in uh, it, uh, different social, economic, uh, environmental, political backgrounds. So the way they speak about it is different. So, uh, but uh, uh, overall, any system which pulls out women, that would not ensure their inclusion and uh, that will not ensure their vision leadership and main training uh, women visionary leadership. So uh, the, I always use, the, my, my main concept is, is uh, visionary leadership. So it's not just about leadership. Visionary leadership is about long run vision, having a long run vision with clarity and working towards that, uh, that, that uh, focus or that aim, having a very pragmatic and a strategic way. That's be different from uh, being just uh, being a leader. So sometimes being a leader, maybe it can be like being charismatic. Uh, but like when, it's come, when it comes to vision leadership, that person has to have a special vision, a long run, long run vision. So and um, uh, when it comes to uh, Sri Lankan context, we have uh, women uh, actually major in most faculties. In, uh, in most faculties, majority students are women. And when it comes to labor force, that's contrast to that. So we have less uh, number of females in our labor ship, uh, in our uh, labor uh, pattern. So uh, like go further, uh, when it comes to leadership, women visionary leader, women leaders are less in Sri Lankan context. There are women, there were women leaders, like uh, political women leaders, but they were not emerged uh, like uh, through their kind of capacity and their kind of their their own uh, things, most of the time they were came from political families and like likewise. So um, and one main thing I have recognized here is like stay, there are state policies of development. Those policies are sometimes not promoting women as visionary leaders. They emphasize women as culture carriers. So some, this, this thing, the, uh, considering women just as culture carriers, so the uh, who members, like the persons who are uh, carrying out families, so that is not uh, what we have to think about making policies for women. Women also are human, uh, not, not like they are not 
only mothers, they are not only housewives, they are humans. So we have to think about that. We have to have state policies of development which promote uh, women missionary leadership, leadership and not just uh, considering the, them as culture carriers. So uh, why I'm considering this is, emphasizing this is, I have, I have seen that when I'm, uh, when I'm analyzing recent, um, uh, recent development agendas of the country. So uh, when it comes to uh, research methodology, um, okay, when it comes to research methodology, so first I will explain what is my research problem. So research pro problem, uh, you can see that here, so I'll explain that bit. Uh, so uh, here I have, I have uh, tried to see importance, what's the importance of having female visionary leadership Female, female vision leaders navigating in the country's development process. So uh, basically I can say that here, according to the literature uh, that I have referred, so uh, women are near half of the population, not only Sri Lanka, when it comes to global population, women are uh, near half. And when it comes to, uh, the, the, uh, when it comes to population prospects, uh, estimated population, uh, like predictions about population, women will be more than men in future. So if we can't uh, have women leaders, we can't make policies that truly understand women's needs and what are the challenges or whatever things they face. So therefore, women visionary leadership is an important thing. So, uh, and, and I, from uh, my research questions, I have considered about uh, contribution of state university curriculum regarding um, uh, inclusion of women in Sri Lankan development. Uh, process and what are the social and cultural factors that faculties were uh, included in this uh, research and I selected eight ministries uh, and I um, like I researched uh, uh, using questionnaires and uh, uh, structured interviews with these uh, two, res uh, two uh, research fields. So when it comes to research sample, academic staff of the University of Colombo and uh, I, I interviewed only academic staff members. So, and then uh, administration level positions of eight selected government ministries. And I used purposive, purposive sampling because I wanted to have specific, uh, I wanted to new, uh, spe know specific things about a uh, few, uh, like, uh, specific uh, kind of things. So, and I uh, interviewed 87, uh, there were 87 structured interviews and pri collected uh, primary data from 132 questionnaires uh, with sampling with replacement. And when it comes to collect data collection, it's an expert research, and I use survey me method, and there were three stages as uh, I explained. I, uh, first, I did questionnaire survey to get ba basic idea, uh, basic idea, so what, what I have to, uh, like, the, to understand main uh, categories, so main, uh, main things that I have to uh, go uh, more deeper. So then I, um, then you, uh, like, based on those, those things, uh, I, uh, I interviewed people then, and after that, uh, 
the, as the second stage, I had key informant uh, discussion with few experts. So qualitative data analysis, and you, I use discourse analysis. Specifically, I uh, uh, tried to uh, analyze uh, gender and development discourses of the country. And ethical considerations were, uh, um, uh, were protected. And um, most of the time, the women le uh, leadership was discussed in relation to business and cooperative work. And like it's like the link between development and vision, women vision leadership is bit lacking. So and vision or uh, like vision consists of like uh, ability to frame practices, generate new ideas, new strategies, communicate those possibilities. And when it comes to envisioning, it's about articulating com compelling vision, mission strategy. Like it's it has more weight. Vision leadership has more weight than leadership. So and uh, and when it comes to development, this development debate, so approaches used in current world, uh, uh, one main uh, thing is like sustain, sustainable development approach and uh, uh, being adhere being adhere to that. Uh, even uh, you, uh, United Nations has developed uh, like you, uh, like common uh, common kind of uh, approach to use. Uh, so when it comes to that, um, uh, that is like. Uh, uh, Millennium Development Goals, Sustainable Development, they have uh, think about that, uh, this aspect. And um, so, um, uh, yeah. And then uh, from, from goal three, like promoting and equality and empowering females, eliminating gender disparities uh, in primary as well as secondary education and uh, achieving gender equality and empowering all women and girls. And um, I will uh, quickly discuss about this main part. So, like uh, when it comes to my topic, I uh, when it comes to reality, I noticed few. So those are there are cultural arguments, history argument, common sense argument, nature argument. So these are the arguments that that we can see when it comes to gender uh, gender patterns. So basically, gender is a socially constructed thing uh, that is not coming from the nature. So like being. Being just a, a female it doesn't mean that that person has to be uh, like uh, inferior to men. So, and especially power relationships, even in uh, even within universities, we can see when it comes to uh, leadership of uh, the societies. When it comes to my university, the ratio was like 600 girls and only 100 boys. But many of the time, mo most of the time, women were the chairpersons of those uh, those societies. But the, another main thing is. Like women are the one who selected those persons and proposed those men. That means like it, it, it's like not only patri patriarchy, but women has been internalized, those cultural, social things. So that is what makes this, uh, like, uh, this more debatable. So when it comes to conclusion, um, Sri Lanka shows uh, lar larger gender gap gaps in labor force participation uh, and um, uh, although women are the uh, near half the population, so uh, and then um, uh, labor force participation of the country contrasts with the gender distribution patterns of the state and the education system. So and in one point, another point of view, we can we, I, 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 we can we can say that universities, state universities, are are, the, are a cross cross section of the society, and mm -hmm. females are not genetically less visionary than men. But uh, the way uh, how uh, gender prejudice is taking place in the society, they are, that is the place that we have this issue. Uh, like uh, patriarchy, gender division of labor, the debate between private and public sphere. So uh, like, uh, the, the, like when it comes to leadership, it's in the public sphere. So like most of the time, because of these gender prejudices, women are limited only to the private sphere. So, uh, for example, when it comes to the societies thing, I told you about the leadership of the uh, like so student committees and such kind of things. So the people think that women can't stay at night, so they have to be, uh, they not have to be leaders. So what the, the, my my point is like we can we can make an environment that we manage things uh, like considering those those aspects. So that is my main point. So. Uh, Special the division of labor and public uh, and private sphere, and uh, and one main another main argument that I have to emphasize here that I want to emphasize here is uh, where the state policy of development of the country does not promoting women visionary leadership, just considering them 
considering women as culture carrier that will not uh, encourage women to be leaders. Thank you. Questions are right. Thank you very much. I think the economic impact of brain drain and migration in Sri Lanka. Vijay Ratna representing Sri Lanka Institute of Information Technology. Uh, so let me start off my presentation by highlighting a quote that former United States Ambassador of uh, South Africa, Mr. William L. Swingsley, he said that uh, we cannot and should not stop people from migration. We have to give them a better life at home. Migration is not a problem, it's a process. So moving on to the presentation, yeah, introduction. Uh, these days, uh, the words migration, brain drain are very familiar to us because migration has been an ongoing worldwide concern. Uh, the major reason for that is uh, political, economic, and social revolution that has been occurring during the past few years. Uh, when it comes to this brain drain, brain drain means a uh, movement of highly skilled employees from developing nations to developed nations. Uh, in Sri Lankan context, uh, many educated and skilled employees uh, leave the country due to numerous reasons and that trend is not new to Sri Lanka. But uh, recently, a significant number of professionals such as uh, IT experts, doctors, professors, economists, intellectuals, they started leaving the country uh, due to the recent economic collapse occurred uh, in Sri Lanka and that made a discussion within the country what would happen to Sri Lanka's future economy if this started increasing. Uh, currently, Sri Lanka lacks an appropriate uh, policy framework to overcome this issue. Um, and uh, there's a research gap exists because there are no clear statistics available to measure this brain drain in Sri Lanka, as well as there are very limited studies available uh, that has been investigated in depth related to this uh, brain drain and migration. So moving on to the uh, objectives, our main objective is to investigate the economic impact of uh, brain drain and migration in Sri Lanka. So our, so, uh, the, uh, we have investigated two sub-objectives, first one is to investigate the migration and brain drain patterns in Sri Lanka and the second one is to investigate the or oh, identify the key components that determine the skill migration. Uh, moving on to the methodology part, our research is basically uh, mainly based on a qualitative approach and we have used primary data for our research. Then uh, the sample size is 100 plus executives from six sectors, namely uh, HR and admin, banking, finance, IT, um, then um, educational and construction fields. So our sampling technique is noble sampling method and uh, we used uh, thematic analysis to analyze the data we collected from in-depth interviews. Moving on to the next slide, uh, for the first objective we used past literature data. So using past literature data for the first objective we did a comprehensive or systematic literature review. Uh, for the second objective we used uh, past literature data plus in-depth interviews data. So here we come to the uh, main part of our presentation that is results and discussion. So first of all, I'm going to explain you about the uh, main findings of our uh, first objective. So in 2000, a new student migration wave have been identified. Then uh, between 2000 to 2003, the migration population uh, didn't change significantly. And then uh, between 2003 to 2004, <coughs> Uh, the migration population has a significant growth uh, in percentage wide, it was 2.28%. Uh, uh, from 2005 to 2008, there wasn't a notable change in migration population, but in 2008 to 2009, the growth rate dropped by minus 1.7%, and that was a serious reduction. Uh, when it comes to uh, with, uh, the time period between 2009 to 2011, the unemployment rate has increased, so the migration population was also increased in proportion with that. Uh, then between 2014 to 2022, there were some fluctuations in the migration population, but they were not very significant. In 2022, the migration population was nearly 3,20,000, 
and that were and that is the highest in the Sri Lankan history. Um, then uh, we are moving to the results of our sub-objective two. Um, here we have identified major push and pull factors of skill migration. Uh, the income gap between their home country and the host country is uh, one of the major reasons that influence professionals to migrate by their own. Uh, that is mostly common seen in the uh, low income countries. Traditionally, professionals uh, tend to choose uh, OECD countries such, such as uh, UK, Canada, Australia, New Zealand as their destinations because those countries provide uh, citizenship for uh, skilled migrants. Um, then, uh, as I uh, mentioned earlier, we have identified major push and pull factors when it comes to pull factors. Pull factors mean uh, the factors that attract uh, migrants to their host country, such as um, higher wages, poor, uh, higher working conditions, and higher living standards. Uh, when it comes to push factors, uh, push factors make uh, immigrant migrant or professionals want to uh, migrate for uh, developed countries such as uh, unemployment, uh, high inflation, poor working conditions. Uh, then uh, we are moving to the results of our uh, in-depth interviews data. So here you can see uh, most of the responses were collected from the Western province and we collected data in such a way that we uh, covered all the provinces in Sri Lanka. So 49% of the respondents were from uh, age group of 20 to 30 and uh, most of the respondents were male executives and that was 53%. Um, when it comes to their employed sectors, as I mentioned earlier, we covered six employee sectors. So the majority of the respondents were collected from the IT sector and uh, most of them had uh, undergraduate qualification or they had degree. Um, so when it comes to their current job satisfaction, most of them were not satisfied as uh, mentioned here. Uh, these are some responses they gave. Uh, they uh, were really not satisfied uh, with their current job because they have to pay higher amount of taxes uh, when it comes, uh, but their salary is not increasing uh, in proportion to the tax rate. So uh, when it comes to their intention to migrate, uh, that's the uh, first question we asked uh, after asking the demographic information. So they have, uh, uh, they have a higher intention to migrate. If they said uh, no to this question, then we disregarded those uh, responses. Um, then when we asked the reasons to migrate, the majority of them said the political instability within the country is one of the major reasons uh, that influenced them to migrate. And the other one is financial reasons uh, because of the recent tax policy changes and uh, higher cost of living, personal reasons, better career opportunities are some of other reasons that they have uh, mentioned. Uh, when we asked about their perception on current government, most of them were not satisfied because uh, one of the respondents said that he is not satisfied with the current government procedures as government take uh, decisions and implement strategies, policies without uh, uh, taking or without considering the viewpoint of the general public. And another respondent said that he is not satisfied or impressed with the government procedures because government haven't take, hasn't taken any uh, long-term plans or long-term uh, proper plans uh, to uh, minimize bribery and corruption within the country. Then uh, moving on to the next one, we asked what are the problems they face due to this political instability within the country. So uh, the majority of them said that sudden policy changes is one of the major reasons. Uh, sudden policy change, uh, when it comes to this sudden policy changes, the tax uh, policy change uh, takes uh, the main uh, place. And then uh, unstable economy within the country is another major problem. Then limited opportunities within Sri Lanka is another major pro problem because in Sri Lanka's job market, it often fails to absorb a uh, higher growing number of graduates and force them to seek better opportunities in abroad. Um, then uh, we asked what are their perception about the tax policy changes. 
So most of them said that is not uh, fair and uh, reasonable, uh, and uh, it has a negative impact on businesses, and it reduces uh, uh, in in a in a it reduces um, investments within the country that people try to put uh, within the country. So these are another uh, opinions that they give. And uh, last, uh, as last question, we asked, uh, can this uh, brain drain turn into brain gain? So most of them said yes, if Sri Lanka uh, would become stable as uh, before, uh, if Sri Lanka has a stability, uh, stable in political side, and uh, if Sri Lanka has good economic opportunities and advanced uh, technology, so this brain drain can uh, turn into brain gain then uh, the changes to be carried out. So most of them said uh, there should be a political restructuring uh, within the government because uh, they said that uh, politicians, uh, most of the politi politicians do not possess um, the required skills uh, to make uh, policies and strategies that should be uh, need needed to overcome from this issue, that should be needed to implement uh, policies or strategies to overcome from this issue. Uh, then uh, we are coming to the latter part of our uh, presentation. So as I mentioned earlier, here we investigated two objectives. First one is uh, to investigate the brain drain and migration patterns. And the second one is to uh, identify the key components that determine the skill migration. So major push factors of skill migration now uh, unemployment, higher inflation, poor working conditions, and low living standards. Uh, major pull factors are higher wages, better career opportunities, higher living standards, and uh, seeking advanced technologies and better educational opportunities. So through this study, we were able to uh, investigate that there are both positive and negative consequences of this brain drain and migration, but positive, uh, negative consequences outweigh the positive consequences. So in this study, we focused only on the six employee sectors in Sri Lanka. So future researchers can uh, focus on other sectors too. Uh, using the findings of this study, policymakers can uh, implement a new uh, policy to retain these uh, valuable human resources within the country. Because as I mentioned earlier, currently Sri Lanka lacks an appropriate policy to uh, overcome this brain drain issue. So these are the references uh, we used for this uh, presentation, and I would like to express my gratitude for the uh, for my institution and uh, supervisor, my co-supervisor, and other authors, and uh, mainly the respondents who helped us to make this research a success. Thank you. The next presenter is. C.A. Krishanthan, uh, Faculty of Graduate Studies, KDU. Uh, I mean, these are initials, so I don't, uh, he, him, he, right? Uh, in English, you know, we have to refer to the gender, ne? Uh, unfortunately. Uh, uh, he will be talking uh, about, uh, his title is The Study of How Technological Development and Digital Transformation Are Applied in Social Organizations in transforming themselves to gain efficiency and leadership competency. Uh, no doubt. It's a very good thing, you know, all of you guys, most of you guys are students, I believe. So it's a, it's, right, uh, all of them. So it's a very good thing to kind of like have a book in front of you and write down the notes so that, so that you, will, you will begin to, you know, understand and, and it'll go into your brain. And, and mark down, oh, this is interesting, I want to say something about this, or, or this is, something I want to ask, right? So note down, you don't have to remember that this is, this is not the best place to kind of like do this job, right? I mean, you may, you may think because you're young, but, but try, try what I say. Just, just give it a try. And the other thing is... My name is Lavangi. So Lavangi. Lavangi, L-A-V-A-N-G. Lavangi, okay. Let me, let me write down these things because... And, and you mean? I'm Chelsea. 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 
Okay, uh, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is Alex Krishanthan. I am working as a national coordinator for sponsorship business system in a social organization. So uh, my study also related to my job role. So that's the main reason I was selecting this topic. So when it comes to this topic, you can simply find uh, You need to ask uh, him, yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> now you know why you shouldn't send two presentations because you never know what you'll get. <laughs> Okay, uh, sorry for the inconven inconvenience, the, only the title is wrong, so because I was sending two presentations. Uh, so, my, uh, as I told you earlier, my job role also related to this title, so that's what the main reason for selecting this topic. So thank you, my dear colleagues, for giving this opportunity for me to present my findings during this conference. Uh, before moving to the presentation, I like to emphasize a quote. When digital transformation is done in a right way, it's like a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. So this quote was emphasized by Mr. George. He was a, a senior lecturer in MIT school. So transformation is not done in overnight or within one day we cannot do this trans uh, transformation. So transformation means it's a huge process and a sustainable change is a transformation. So these are the abbreviations I was using during my presentation so you can simply find. Uh, so these are the content when I was doing my study, these are the content uh, I was using. So the, as I told you earlier, the main quote which was emphasized by Mr. George was uh, encourage me to start this study. So when it comes to the introduction part, uh, uh, social organization means it can be an advocacy group, it can be a social organization, INGOs, anything. So that's what I was mentioning, this as a social organization. When it's come to the social organization, there were so many issues they were facing when it's come to digitalizing process or the, when it's come to technology development. So mainly they are focusing this technology development or the digital transformation for their fundraising and for the decision making. Without a fund, we cannot run any organization. So mainly they are focusing or they, they are mainly uh, emphasizing the uh, digital transformation for the fundraising. So when it comes to the digital tools we are using, mainly for social organization, they are using this digital transformation to automate the process and especially to streamline the process. When it comes to streamline, streamlining the process, in each and every organization, it can be an educational institution or it can be a non-profit organization, anything, we have to mainly focus on the streamlining the process. Otherwise, it will be take long time to reach our ultimate goal. So it's also one of the main objective when it's come to the digital transformation. And especially when it's come to the study, uh, I'm, I'm mainly focusing on the strategies, impact, and especially when it's come to digital transformation, I'm going to discuss about the barriers and challenges also. So this is my problem statement. So when I was doing my study, I was able to find some important problems that, that are face, faced by this social organization, especially when it comes to social organization, the limited understanding and the, uh, import, the importance given to the technology is very low. And especially when it comes to the knowledge part, most of the organization, most of the colleagues, the person who are working in the organization, they have lack of knowledge in digital transformation. So we, we need a capacity building or the capacity fulfillment also. So uh, this is my objective, you can simply find uh, in the screen. So to, to support these main objectives, I was selected some important sub-objectives also. So these are, the sub these are the sub objectives mainly contributed to this main objective. So uh, when it comes to the sub objectives, I, uh, we have to know what are the existing technologies and the pinpoints that are this uh, social organization are using. And especially, we have to focus what are the factors affecting for this digital transformation. 
and specially we have to find what are the roles and responsibilities these kind of technology development or the uh, the main technologies are contributing to this ultimate goal and especially we have to focus the challenges and barriers and most of the time we don't focus about the partnership or the collaboration always we have to focus what are the organization or the what are the institution we can uh, pa partner with those uh, organization we can reach our ultimate goal so these are the sub objectives uh, mainly uh, contributed for this main objectives so these are the research questions so i i was able to find four main research questions uh, based on my uh, literature review and uh, based on my findings so when it comes to the research gaps, I was able to find some important research gaps from my study. So most of the time, the leaders are not giving priority to digital transformation. And especially, if you are, if you are taking Sri Lanka, this is the upper developing country, so most of the time, our mindset change is very low. So we are not expect, accepting changes, and we are not ready to uh, focus on the changes. And especially, Always a leader should have digital literacy. It means they should know what is digitalization, they should know what is technology and everything. The same way, always we have to align for the culture and the same way our technological development should align our ultimate organization goal. And especially a supportive culture should be there in each and every organization. So these are the research gaps I was able to find from my study. So this is my research framework. You can find, uh, simply you can find from objectives to conclusion. So this is how my research uh, has been conducted. So when it's come to the research, before I'm starting the research, I was doing a pilot study. Based on my pilot study, I was able to find what are the gaps and what are the areas I have to focus in my questionnaire and everything. So my, popu uh, my research population was 40, 42. And uh, when, when I was selecting the sample, I was using a the, uh, formula called Cochrane uh, formula. So based on the formula, I was able to uh, get 32 as a sample size. So based on my entire research, I was focusing the 32 sample and I was analyzing all the data. So uh, my research uh, design was a qualitative way and my uh, sample size was, as I told you, 38. And especially when it's come to data collection, I was choosing the semi-structured interview, and the thematic analysis was done for data analyzing. Especially when it comes to the data presenting, I was used uh, SPS and um, Microsoft Excel. For today's presentation, I was uh, planning to uh, share with you a Power BI site also. Uh, so before moving to the uh, data analysis, I was uh, planned to discuss with you regarding some results and findings. Based on my data collection, I was able to get a lot of uh, findings. So the, special, the very first thing is the digital, tra uh, digital uh, technological in innovation and the uh, technological development. When it comes to the uh, success measures, I was able to find what are the lessons learned we can get from the other organization and the same way what are the success measures we can uh, improve for the current organization. And when it's come to the level of the technological development and digital transformation, I was able to find what are the levels and what, how this digital transformation levels has been measured through the organization. Especially when it's come to digital competency, most of the organization getting a lot of impact from this aspect. And especially when it's come to stakeholders or partners, we can find what are the impact we can get from the uh, digital transformation. So this is... Uh, this QR code you can use for uh, uh, to get my data. So I have already uh, shared some uh, printouts also. So you can simply use your Q uh, QR code or uh, QR code scanner or anything, and you can simply scan this QR uh, and you can find my analysis. So when it comes to the main part of the analysis, uh, most of the organizations are not fully. Uh, move to the digital transformation, they are partially uh, moving to the digital transformation. In the sense, they are not going to change their entire organization digital technology in one. No, they are simply, they are step by step, they are doing the digital transformation. When it's come to the uh, level, it was moderate. When it's come to the technology, most of the organization are 
moving towards cloud computing and IoT. So these are the main two technology most of the organizations are using. When it comes to less or the low priority given technologies, artificial intelligence and big data analysis has been uh, identified as a low given priority uh, technology. So, but a very good part is some organization are combining these two technologies and they are doing the uh, transformational development process also. So when it comes to the time frame, most of the organization are using or the moving towards the digital transformation for last 10 years. Before they are not, not focused, they are uh, focused on the digital transformation, but when it comes to the last 10 years, most of the organization are mainly focusing on the digital transformation. So based on my findings, I was able to get some good points because after the digital transformation, most of the organization cost has been reduced. When it comes to the cost, most of the organization are spending a huge money for their admin cost, for the vehicles, for the building, for the labor force, everything. So the cost reduction was uh, a main significant change uh, when it comes to digital transformation. And especially one more thing I, I want to emphasize, the simplifying task. When it comes to simplifying task, most of the time our work is duplicated. We are doing the same work for twice or three times. So the same way, most of the time, most of the organization tasks were simplified. Um, especially when it comes to leadership, the leadership has been enhanced. It means the leadership qualities has been increased. So uh, based on my findings, you can find the uh, numbers and figures here. These are the analysis I have done. So when it comes to main part of the analysis, the streamlining process is done in most of the organization. So most of the duplication, duplicating tasks were very reduced and the same way there were a huge operational impact is there. So when it's come to the uh, digital tools and manpower, uh, as I told you earlier, the manpower is very low. So most of the money or the uh, funding can be uh, taken place for so many development. So uh, when it comes to the leader's perspective, the effective communication also increased. So this is also one of the uh, good results. So as I told you earlier, the transition period, last 10 years is the transition period for this digital transformation and the digital, uh, through this transformation, there is a huge improvement in the strategic planning of each and every organization. So when it's come to leader's perspective again, the leaders are able to get real-time data the same way they, are, they were able to get advanced analysis for their decision making. So based on this uh, analysis, they can easily perform data-driven decision making. It means each and every time they can perform a good data analysis. Uh, when it comes to discussion part, uh, as a Sri Lankan mindset or the commonly, most of the people are uh, not ready to change their mindset. So it's one of the main um, issue that we are facing the same way, lack of technological expertise. The most of the people are not expert in the technology and especially when it comes to Sri Lanka, the data security also very high. So as a solution, we can uh, get a change management uh, strategies we can implement the same way the leader should focus on the uh, data-driven digital initiatives. Uh, so when it comes to the conclusion part, uh, we were focusing how the technology makes very impact for each and every organization. The same way a good leader can have a, or make a positive change in each and every organization. The same way if a organization culture is changed, we can have a massive impact for each and every organization. The same way, if, if we can focus on data security, most of the time the productivity will be high, as, as well as the organization security also will be high. So these are the recommendations I can simply give for, uh, give for you all based on my uh, findings. So we have to focus on the digital strategy, we have to develop digital strategy, the same way we have to focus on the capacity building, not on the capacity building, after the capacity building we have to monitor the change and the progress also, especially when it's come to partnership, we have to focus on how we can make a lot of partnership with each and every organization. 
So these are the uh, main uh, findings uh, from my uh, area. So these are the reference I was using. You can uh, click this link and you can find the reference also. So thank you so much, my dear audience, for being patient and listening for my uh, uh, presentation. And thank you, Judge Panel, for giving this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. OK, now we move to uh, philosophy. Uh, yeah, it'll be Dr. Darshana Ashoka Kumara from the Department of Social Sciences at KDU. Uh, he will present to you uh, on uh, his, his title would be uh, Hyperosiology of Nagarjuna's Philosophy, a hermeneutical reading. And if you didn't understand any of these things, uh, he will explain, OK? Uh, basically, uh, my presentation is uh, not uh, on numbers, it's basically qualitative and, uh, <coughs> and philosophy. Uh, Hypoosiology of Nagarjunian philosophy, uh, it's a hermeneutical reading. Uh, why I took uh, Hypoosiology and why I took uh, Nagarjuna will be uh, discussed here. And uh, what are the implications of hypoosiology when it comes to sustainability in uh, modern life? Uh, Nagarjuna is a Buddhist <coughs> philosopher, a towering figure of Indian thought, basically Buddhist thought. He is the founder of uh, Madhyamaka tradition of Buddhism. It's one of roots of Mahayana Buddhism. But not actually it can be categorized as Mahayana uh, because uh, it's also identified as a Kathyanavad uh, because uh, it's more into, uh, in case, more into uh, early Buddhism as well as uh, Professor uh, DJ Kalupana and uh, Warder and kind of intellectuals, they had argued that uh, Madhyamika tradition is kind of Katyanava, then it can be identified even with the early tradition of Buddhism. But uh, it, it is one of uh, roots of Mahayana thought. Anyways, uh, his philosophy is based on the Buddhist theory of dependent uh, origination, or we all know about Pratitya Samuppada in Sanskritized words, and in Pali terms, it's Patitya Samuppada. Then how these terms would apply in our modern contexts? So uh, what I'm going to argue is that uh, how Nagarjuna negates everything because Nagarjuna does not want to come into any affirmative claim, right? Using uh, Paticca Samuppada, he negates everything, right? Uh, because as he, he, he would say, you cannot give any affirmative distance on any causes and conditions. Nama Rupa Pachya Salayata, no kind of that, it's just <coughs> Uh, co-dependently originated, not, uh, 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 they don't have some inherent existence or uh, he would say in his terms, sabha, uh, therefore uh, that uh, Nagarjunian philosophy is also called uh, nishabhavada or shunyatavada because they would say, because Nagarjuna negates all positive claims, therefore it's called shunyata darshan. Uh, my main research problem, what I'm going to problematize here, is that uh, this negation, that Nagarjunian negation, establishes some hypoosiosis. Uh, then hypoosiosis means that uh, you believe there is some hyper essence out there. Uh, for example, like some Western uh, uh, 
medieval philosophers like Anselm, uh, pseudo Dionysus, and kind of uh, philosophers, Greg, uh, Nias of Gregory. And uh, the kind of philosophers argue that, uh, yeah, there is some reality out there, but we cannot say it. Right? As uh, uh, Wittgenstein also claimed in kind of things that because there are say sayable things and unsayable things when it comes to reality. Um, uh, as Wittgenstein says, uh, world of my limit is world of my thought or my language. Uh, beyond my language, yeah, there are some uh, realities are there, but uh, they are unsayable and could be like God or as we have lately uh, discussed like Nirvana or maybe Karma, a kind of metaphysical conceptions are there, but we cannot say them. Right? Uh, if, I, if, I, if you go to Buddha and if you would ask what is Nirvana, Buddha would say, no, I cannot say this, because it is Atakkhavachara. It's a doctrine of Atakkhavachara. It's unsayable. It's ineffable. So, uh, but what is the implication of this unsayable things into this modern world? Because the world, the knowledge, the, the way we perceive the world would be structures based on uh, our conception towards the reality. So, as we uh, popularly discuss, the world, is that as many philosophers would argue, the Western thought is much dualistic. Right? My argument is that not only the Western thought, that instead of, in, in place of Western thought, some people would take uh, things like uh, Nirvana, things like Horns, things like Dao. Dao is very popular in case of, uh, in America and other places. Um, Dao is Dao physics, and much of Daoisms are there. So, the, uh, these kind of negative affirmative, negatively affirmative doctrines are also dualistic in a sense. A lot of Westerners are turning into Eastern doctrines, Eastern thoughts uh, based on uh, that it is not non-dualistic. No, I have, my argument here is that while taking a very towering figure in Eastern thought, Nagarjuna, I would say no, uh, it's also again build up some hyper essence, right? Then uh, how uh, this hyper essence would be built up? Then uh, I would take uh, Gadamerian hermeneutics. Right? So uh, that basically through uh, Gadamerian hermeneutics, I would say the absolute, or uh, in, in Buddhist terms, absolute paramartha or supreme reality, or in other uh, uh, systems like could be Dao or Horn, right? So uh, they, these things are actually closures, closed, right? Because you have something, uh, so some reality, some hyper essence out there. Because you negate all the things when it comes to, for example, Brahminic tradition that you say neti neti. You say, if you say something, uh, is that the reality? No. Again, if you show something again, then the ultimate negation is out there. But as Nagarjuna uh, claims up that he says Nirvana is aparapratya. It is not conditioned by any cause. So it is something hyper essential, that not as essential rather hyper-essential or hyper-usiosis, usiology or hyper-usiosis. That means that you come to kind of essence through, a, through negation, right? So it is not positivistic. So then the, this world, again, when we are going to understand this world, the sustainability of this world, the reality about this world or dichotomy between man and nature kind of things, then that hyper, hyper works out there. So what 
we can do is that we will have to understand the reality is always becoming. Reality is always undecidable as Derrida says. But rather, the, in Nagarjunian philosophy and all the many, all many uh, uh, Eastern thought and uh, far Eastern thoughts, that's, uh, that's going to be a uh, very uh, kind of uh, uh, apophatic affirmation or uh, that you, you, you withdraw to some silence, right? So finally, you get in, in philosophical terms, it's some otherness or alterity, right? That, 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 that alterity comes with some semantic closure. That's what uh, Nagarjuna Nirvana would be finally a closure. Then b based on that foundation, the entire system of <coughs> thought is constructed. Then finally, I'm, I'm, my argument is that the way we think about the world can be constructed either in essentially or hyper-essentially. Rather, uh, the, the, the answer could be there to understand world in undecidable way. That's what can we, what can we do the, in the uh, 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 deconstructive thought. So, the reality would not be a now. It would not uh, that it would not be some ontology. It's it's a reality cannot be a word. It can be a noun. It's it, it cannot be a um, ontology. Rather, through hyp that hypothesis of uh, Nagarjuna, what is happening out there that you confirm <coughs> certain ontology or you ontologize reality. Then once you ontologize reality, you see the world in a dualistic form. Then that you will have to rise about something that, because then categories and order comes to the world. Then you will think something is better than another thing, or something is powerful than another thing. That hierarchical thought comes to the world, and then finally it would lead to unsustainability in this world. That is very philosophical. It is not all about uh, uh, <coughs> something out there about technology. As Martin Heidegger says, technology is a matter of, uh, matter of uh, thought. For example, Ma Martin Heidegger says that uh, you feel through the uh, dualistic thought, there is technology out there to use it. For example, if you see a cow, you would see burger. Because that's a uh, uh, dualistic thinking. That is the essential thinking. And also hyper-essential thinking is not far different to that. Therefore, my argument <coughs> is that not only the Western uh, uh, thought, not, not only the Western logocentric thought is essential and dualistic, but also non-Western Eastern thought is also hyper-essential and dualistic. <laughs> So what I'm going to try, uh, problematize is that Nagar, how uh, Nagarjunian philosophy is going to be a hypothesis and how it would be lead into unsustainable perception of the world uh, uh, eventually. Thank you all for my uh, listening to my presentation. Last one that's going to be online. So. Uh, uh, it will be, again, I don't know the first name, uh, some Anuradha uh, from the Faculty of Computing at KDU, uh, presenting online, exploring the role of anonymous social media posts in empowering women affected by deception <coughs> and infidelity, a qualitative study. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so today I'm going to present my research on exploring the role of anonymous social media posts in empowering women oh, affected by much. deception and uh, infidelity, a qualitative stu uh, study. So uh, the uh, authors are myself, uh, Mr. R.P. Skatyarachi, 
uh, Mrs. P. R. D. Vijayasinghe and Miss M. A. A. Kavya. So we will uh, move on to the uh, content. So this is the uh, content I'm going to cover and this is the introduction. Uh, so uh, when we talk about this uh, anonymous social media and the empowering women, uh, so women uh, affected by this uh, domestic, domestic threats, deception, infidelity and the uh, subsequent, subsequent mental health consequences uh, often face barriers uh, in seeking support and sharing their experiences uh, openly uh, due to the uh, fear of uh, <coughs> so uh, due to the uh, fear of uh, judgment, uh, stigma and uh, repression. So uh, however with the rise of uh, anonymous social media platforms, uh, women may now have a safe space uh, to share their experiences, uh, reach out for the help they need uh, or and also to find a place where they can feel safe uh, experience, uh, expressing their uh, emotions, uh, uh, exp uh, expressing their emotions. So uh, they may, uh, some, in some scenarios, the women, women may, may be unable to get the help they need or to find a place where they can feel safe expressing their emotions because they are uh, ex uh, afraid of being judged. Uh, and uh, the purpose of this qualitative research uh, is to examine how these uh, anonymous uh, online social media posts can help women who have experienced uh, domestic violence, deception, infidelity and also the uh, other negative effects uh, on their mental health. So, uh, by doing this research, we can learn a great deal about the uh, impact of these spaces on women's empowerment, well-being and residency in the, uh, in the wake of uh, traumatic events if we look closely at the accounts of women who have lived through them. So, uh, moving on to the next slide, uh, I'm going to talk about what are these anonymous social media platforms are. So these anonymous social media platforms refer to the online platforms or apps where users can interact, share uh, content and communicate with others uh, without revealing their uh, real identity. So in these platforms, users typically use uh, usernames or other, form of, uh, other forms of anonymity to protect their personal information and privacy. So uh, the primary characteristics of these uh, anonymous social media platforms um, uh, are the ability for users to engage in conversations uh, and also to share posts and also to connect with others while maintaining while maintaining a level of anonymity. So this anonymity uh, can encourage open and honest communication uh, and also uh, at the same time we have to remember it can also pose challenges related to the online harassment, cyberbullying and also the uh, misuse. So these platforms may be worried in terms of features, design and purpose. Uh, some focuses on sharing secrets or confessions while others enable general social networking discussions or content sharing. Uh, but, all, uh, but all of these uh, keeps users identity hidden or anonymous. So uh, these are the examples for some uh, an anonymous social media platforms. So moving on to the next slide. So when we talk about this purpose of this uh, the research, the purpose of this research, uh, this is a qualitative research, and uh, we have done this research to examine how uh, anonymous social media posts can help empower women, women dealing with uh, the issues, dealing with these issues. So uh, these issues means uh, the deception, infidelity, and their uh, mental health consequences. So, this significant, uh, so there are significant challenges uh, prevent women who have experienced domestic violences, deceit or infidelity from seeking help or uh, talking openly uh, about the impact it has on their mental health. So by analyzing the uh, current state of these online uh, communities and 
determining where they excel and where they fall short, we can develop strategies to enhance their effectiveness in providing emotional support, connecting women with similar uh, experiences and fostering a, a sense of community also. So this study took a uh, qualitative approach uh, by conducting in-depth interviews with the women who had first-hand experience of the psychological effects of domestic violence and deception. So moving on to the methodology, uh, this, uh, the, this study explored how anonymous social media posts can help women uh, who have experienced domestic violence, deception and, or uh, negative effects from um, negative mental health uh, consequences. Uh, so uh, we... Uh, Ma'am, your slides may not be in order. Anuradha. Yeah. Yeah, this is the method. So, uh, we, uh, so through collecting the uh, uh, through collecting an analysis uh, of detailed uh, concept, uh, conceptual data, uh, and also the uh, uh, we have we have uh, we have done a qualitative research. So uh, we made it possible to uh, delve in uh, people's inner thoughts and uh, feelings. So participants for this study uh, were gathered through a women focused online. Uh, communities and all uh, and same uh, and also from the offline organizations so women who had experienced domestic violence dishonesty uh, and also infidelity and negative effects on their mental health were sought out using a, a purposive sample strategy um, and uh, the interview guide was made up uh, free, uh, free from uh, questions and prompts that probe participants uh, uh, feelings uh, feelings so, uh, uh, and the interview data was analyzed using a thematic, a thematic framework. So, the study followed all, uh, and also the study followed all required ethical procedures. So, all participants gave their informed consent, guarantee, uh, in, in, informed consent, uh, guaranteeing their uh, anonymity and confidentiality. So, uh, all participants were informed of the uh, study's goals. Uh, their rights as subjects and also the um, uh, entirely voluntary nature of this participation. So uh, when it comes to the results, uh, the results of this research uh, emphasize the major impact of anonymous social media posting empowering uh, women who have experienced domestic violence, deception, infidelity or other negative effects on their mental health. So these sites offer a, a secure environment in which to express feelings, uh, to find answers to questions, connect with the, uh, connect with like-minded uh, people, and learn new skills, or so on. So uh, the social media that uh, protects users' anonymity is vital because they allow people to speak free, uh, freely without fear of a regulation. Because of this anonymity, these sites provide the people feel more comfortable uh, speaking their minds. So uh, users, uh, users can receive empathy, understanding and also the validation uh, from other users who have suffered similar issues which is especially uh, helpful for the women who, are, who have experienced domestic violence, deception, infidelity or other mental effects. So in addition, social media posts that uh, protect the uh, posts anonymity are a helpful resource for learning about mental health issues uh, and also the available therapies and uh, also the coping mechanisms. So individuals can gain a sense of control, strength and resilience when they anonymously share their uh, stories because they are able to reclaim their stories and uh, end the sti uh, stigma associated with their experience. However, uh, there's a risk. So uh, there's the risks and drawbacks of social media uh, posts, uh, such as the uh, spread of false information, and also the uh, unpleasant exchanges of opinion and also the presence of trolls must be, uh, we should recognize them. So to ensure trustworthiness and security, uh, the moderation support and certified materials are a essential thing. So when it comes to the uh, recommendations, uh, uh, women can uh, feel uh, safe to talk about their uh, lives, asking to help, receiving encouragement on uh, these sites because of the anonymity they allow. So the results also uh, suggest the value of forming relationships with those who have
have gone through similar situations as this can help women uh, feel less alone in their struggles. So uh, we can improve these uh, social media sites to better, uh, to better help for the women who have experienced those kind of uh, difficulties. So and also uh, we can uh, improve these sites using information technology and data security uh, to uh, better serve for the uh, women. So when it comes to the uh, discussion, uh, uh, by using these social media sites, women uh, can feel comfortable speaking uh, uh, about uh, speaking on these sites where they can uh, also get support and learn from the experience of others. So the findings of the study have important uh, uh, implications for the development of online uh, interventions and support systems that uh, leverage the positive act, uh, aspects of anonymous social media to empower women and promote their well-being in the face of uh, adversity. Uh, and so women can feel uh, so, uh, safe talking about their lives, asking for help and uh, receive encouragement by using these sites also. So uh, when it comes to the uh, conclusion, uh, in the conclusion, these findings of the study highlighted uh, the significance of uh, understanding the potential of anonymous social media posts in advancing uh, women's empowerment. Uh, society may play a vital role uh, in assisting women who have been uh, affected by domestic violence and uh, receive infidelity and mental health effects uh, by amplifying their voices. So uh, we have to validate their experience and uh, we have to provide them with support and service. So, uh, with using these anonymous social media posts and uh, so anonymous social media platforms, we can uh, surely do this. So uh, this is the end. Um, these are the references which are used. Thank you. So you, you, you can share, you know, whatever you want. So, uh, uh, and hopefully we have enough time, I'll, I'll manage that time. Uh, uh, to begin with, I'm just going to ask three questions, you know, from selected uh, uh, presenters, just to get it rolling. So uh, the others can start thinking, you know, like what they, what they want. So I'll, I'll, I'll just ask Chelsea. Uh, anybody can respond, okay? I mean, it doesn't matter. I'll ask Chelsea. You know, you talked about brain gain. That was not a that was not a central theme uh, of yours. So I understand if you even haven't thought about that, that I can understand that. For me, brain ba brain brain gain. If that's the the opposite of brain drain, right? I mean, if that's how we use, uh, that means kind of like Sri Lanka should open up, right? Uh, there's enough studies that says single A's are a Majority with a minority complex. They are so much threatened by everybody else. You can't just say anybody can come here and work. You know, but that that would be. I don't know. That would be. A, that would be really nice. If single people can say that. But that's historically pro proven. It's it's the other way around, right? Uh, so, how is this important? You know, like, or is it not important? You know, when we when you talk talk about uh, brain gain, maybe, maybe you didn't talk about brain. So that's totally fine with me. Uh, so for Alex, these are just big questions. When you, t when you start talking about transformation that is going to be sustainable, sustaining what? Because transformation itself is a change. You're not, you, you're breaking whatever is there. You're changing, right? So you're changing and you're saying something needs to be sustained. So I think I just ask you to think about, it and maybe you can you can respond uh, to that. Uh, and Anuradha, uh, uh, I would ask you as well. You know, uh, now uh, you have made a very clear case that 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 women are very comfortable talking in all women. You know, like anonymous, uh, or maybe all, not all women, but anonymous sites, you know, about these things, great. I think, I think it's, it's fantastic, we need to promote and all these things are good. But 
if you want to resolve this issue, don't you have to bring it to the society, you know, like which is outside of that anonymity? How would you, how would you, br how would you bridge this gap, you know, trying to resolve whatever the issue is in society? And, and, and uh, uh, off, you know, uh, an issue that the people who are comfortable on talking only uh, in anonymity. I don't know if it's not clear you can ask. Yeah, go, go, go for it. Whoever wants to go. You guys want to respond? You? You? Alex? Anuradha? Okay. Uh, when we asked about this brain gain, uh, actually most of them said that uh, brain gain, uh, brain drain can into uh, can turn into brain gain because uh, currently it cannot. Uh, uh, what, what do you mean by brain gain? Because maybe maybe I misinterpreted. Attracting. Because I'm, I'm attracting other people in the world. So like no, attracting the mi uh, migrated Sri Lankans uh, again oh, to Sri Lanka. Okay. <laughs> Very conservative. Uh, uh, okay. So, if Sri Lanka would become <laughs> stable again, and they are, if uh, Sri Lanka has uh, uh, political stability within the country, so they said yes, their brain drain can turn into brain gain again. Can we do something like in Singapore, like anybody can come and work here? Uh, yeah, that's why uh, they said there should be better opportunities within Sri Lanka because uh, Sri Lankan job market, of, as I mentioned in the presentation, often fails to absorb a um, growing number of graduates. Uh, th therefore, they uh, seek better opportunities in abroad. So that's the reason. Anuradha, you want to go next? Or? Oops, is that Anuradha? <laughs> did, did you hear my question, Anuradha? Okay. Yes, oh, did, did you not hear? Sorry, sir, I couldn't. No, the thing is, it, it, it's, uh, it's a pretty straightforward one. Uh, now you, 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 you presented uh, the, the case that, you know, like women uh, who are affected, you know, in, uh, affected by um, domestic violence, deception, Infidelity, you know, like I mean, they are they are far more comfortable in talking uh, uh, in groups that are like a, uh, uh, in, in talking in anonymity, you know, like in on online groups and and, and so on. And uh, my question is kind of like now it's good. Like I mean, is that all you want, or do you, do you want to to bring that issue to the public? You know, like because. That's where it, it, it's, it needs to uh, be resolved, right? Mm -hmm. So is that, is that possible? Is that not possible? If, if it's possible, how, how, would you, how, how would you bridge this yeah. gap? It's possible to bring those uh, problems into the society, but uh, at first we have to uh, ensure that uh, those victims are not going to uh, uh, tortured again. So, uh, uh, what I'm saying is we have to, uh, by using these sites, we, uh, we can ensure that uh, these platforms um, will not become, uh, become uh, for the, uh, this, uh, by using this platform, they, need, they may not be subject for the harassment or uh, harmful behavior of others. Of others by, by using these platforms, uh, we can uh, get some mechanisms now mechanism and also uh, some strategies by uh, discussing with others now. So thereafter, we can uh, bring those matters to the public, public or to the society uh, to solve those problems. Because uh, at first they have uh, some way out to trust now. Uh, that's why uh, I emphasize the, uh, the importance of this uh, animal social media. Okay, uh, my question is related to change and trans <coughs> transformation. 
So when it's come to this change and transformation, this is first come change and sustainability. Sorry, change and sustainability. So this should be comes from first. It should be comes from our end. The very first thing is we have to ready for to change our mindset. Then only it's very easy for to to do the sustainable change for long time. Then and especially when it's no, my question is when I change my mind, I'm not sustaining my mind. Sustaining means you you maintain something, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So so I'm deciding uh, if you decide that you need to change, there's there's no sustainability in that. So maybe sustainability has a very specific meaning in your thing. Uh, okay. do, do you get what I mean? Yes. So, <coughs> so it cannot be uh, done in a one day. It, it it should be done in a long long term way. So in each and every thing, it will be contribute to that sustainability. A long term, a permanent solution can be a sustainability. Thank you. For Thank you for the opportunity given to ask some questions. Uh, and I appreciate all the presenters making their good presentations. Uh, but I would like to uh, put forward a few questions. Can I ask all questions in together uh, or separately? No, why don't you ask? OK. Uh, you guys can note down, right? right. If, if it's relevant, thank you. Concentrating on the uh, paper one, two, three, mm. that is on the female visionary leaders. In that study, I found that uh, the presenter was uh, focusing on the curriculum, the university curriculum, which is uh, nowadays uh, considered to be uh, common for all males and females. Uh, but I think in, this, in the presentation, uh, the argument was about uh, specifically designing curriculum for producing female visionary leaders, mm. I think that that would be gender biased curriculums. I think that may not be acceptable to the university education. Even it will uh, produce university uh, level female leaders, that would be questionable because usually we expect uh, the curriculum should be uh, common for all male and female. That's my argument. And also, we were not able to see a data analysis of the presentation. Uh, that's, uh, that should be done uh, when making arguments. And uh, the, the presentation on uh, number 107, am I right? The brain drain? Or the brain 413, okay. sir. Yes? 413. Okay. Yes, uh, the economic impact of brain drain and migration. And uh, I think uh, the, the brain drain is usually a event happened in Sri Lanka for a longer time. But when we take the data, we have seen a much more uh, influential factor is not the brain drain, care drain which is considered to be uh, unskilled female migrants to the Middle East, especially. And they earn money at the same time, and they make some social uh, problems in the society. Uh, because they, they create or they, they? In our country. OK. Because they are leaving uh, uh, their children in the family. And uh, they are married most of the time. So the uh, brain drain may be a, an issue, but the, the care drain, which is considered to be a female migrants, uh, is a major issue. And I think you may be able to uh, compare these two. But I would like your response for this one as well. And um, then the next presentation, uh, which is on uh, uh, 523, which was done by Krishantan. Five to three. That is about the uh, social organizations, but you haven't specified the social organizations into your presentation because they may be NGOs or INGOs, 
but there should be some um, examples that we can understand, then the, your argument may be uh, more realistic. Uh, even at the looking by looking at your data, by screening your uh, access, uh, we found, uh, I think you will have to elaborate on these findings in your presentation, rather than giving the uh, access, because you can explain whatever the variables, how the variables are interacting with the factors. So that is my opinion, maybe you can respond. Uh, the next, next uh, presentation was from, uh, I think the last, ah uh, yes, uh, 535, that is about, uh, uh, the yes, anonymous uh, social media uh, post, empowering women. There, it is a very interesting topic. It is usually a hit one, but it is uh, good for the researcher. But we were not able to find uh, what, are, what were the variables taken. I mean, what are the topics uh, discussed in these uh, anonymous social media, which may be uh, useful for them to uh, uh, go for empowering. And that should be very interesting for us to also to understand what are the topics. Uh, it may be some uh, gossips or whatever there should be some meaningful discussions for empowering, so that we need to understand. And um, I think uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Darshana's uh, presentation is very nice one, but I am very sorry I couldn't uh, uh, find uh, my opinions to that one because it is a somewhat highly advanced <laughs> <laughs> presentation. Okay. So, but I, I appreciate your presentation. Thank you. Okay. Anuradha, you want to go first? Yeah. Is D did you hear the question? Uh, is uh, okay. Uh, so. Uh, I suppose in my research, uh, the aspect of hates, uh, or the topics are, the internal topics are, uh, what are the problems of the women they, uh, women encounter uh, when uh, when they are living to, through their life, not the gossips, but uh, some, some women may encounter uh, domestic violence, and some women may encounter some uh, harassments, those kinds of things, but they are afraid to talk about. So those are the uh, some kind of topics I uh, intended in this research. So ju just for your information, I'm not I'm not repeating anything that the, that the presenter said or summarizing because because I want to keep leave their words as they are words. You know because I, once I once I say something, it will be my words. So uh, and and if if not. If you didn't get the response, you can write down and sort of like ask again later. Okay, thanks, Anuradha. And uh, how about the others? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, actually, uh, what I told was uh, like curriculum, university uh, curriculum does not have kind of uh, discriminative things uh, like against women. So uh, like it's, it's a common thing. Uh, and we can't uh, make any curriculum specifically for women. So it's, it's a common thing. That's what, I, uh, like, that's what I found when I'm doing this research. But what I wanted to explain was like three levels. First, I, uh, first I tried to find out are there any, any uh, discriminative, uh, I, I would say gender discriminative uh, aspects or things within the curriculum. So then I found no, like it's not there. There are no specifically uh, gender unequal things within the university curriculum. So then, uh, I then I uh, try to found then uh, what are the things that are making uh, or contributing to gender inequality when it comes to 
university environment so then first i first i found there is there are no kind of uh, specific gender inequalities when it comes to common and we can't make uh, like uh, specific um, specific uh, curriculums for women but when it comes uh, like some subject there there are uh, there are uh, there are subjects that discuss more about women so but in common in university level uh, also the, the curriculum is common so but the the where the uh, where the issue uh, emerging is like the way we practice this curriculum so for example so how we how we uh, like how we uh, it's, it's it's basically coming from how we practice things within the university so it, it sometimes it can be like pers like uh, personality con per uh, connected things that are connected to our personalities so like uh, the the way we practice that so it's not like it's not only about the curriculum the, our attitudes our behaviors likewise so that is why i tried to uh, like uh, why, why why i tried to consider about these three parts was like like uh, uh, the, I, I saw that when it comes to the uh, like when when I when it comes to the uh, broader society, we have uh, we, more women in uh, our uh, education system, uh, uh, primary education, secondary, and even in university education. Uh, but there are women in our labor labor force, but it's even less than men. Uh, they are uh, male counterparts, and when it comes to the leadership level. So it's women are really less. When I am uh, when I when I uh, interviewed uh, uh, my respondents, they they revealed that even within the university system, we have kind of uh, subjects that are common to uh, all gender gr groups, uh, and uh, like. Uh, but when it comes to the leadership, when the women uh, or like women academic uh, trying to be a leader, there are things. Uh, which which is uh, not uh, like uh, not pro or not uh, like uh, not contributing to that in a positive way. So that is what 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 I wanted to uh, like. Uh, Im, I can't explain about how we practice that uh, without explaining are there any inequalities in the curriculum. So that's why I uh, considered about the curriculum and, and then came to the way that we practice that in the society. So, and for the second question, I think uh, I, ha I did data analysis, but I accept that I did not explain that in, in this presentation, uh, like uh, uh, in, with deeper insight. So I accept that. So I think uh, if I may make a comment in the, in the middle, uh, just assuming that you guys are doing research and these are very primary research, right? I mean, you don't have a PhD right now, right? So, so uh, I, think, I think most of the presentations were pretty much like you were talking to your teacher. This is my bibliography. I mean, do I really need the bibliography? I think what, what you really need to do is to use the bibliography in your, in your presentation, you know, like to say A said this, B said this, or something like that. But uh, to show that I do have a bibliography, is, is pretty useless. I mean, it just takes time, actually. Uh, and, and the, you know, to kind of spell out, because research methods is something that you do with the teacher. But now you should be able to be a professional to come to a place and say, you know, like put it in a very, uh, in, a, in a different way, right? I mean, to tell a story. Storytelling is, is what it is, right? So, and I think, uh, uh, mm, Lavangi, uh, I, I, I think, uh, uh, if I may uh, piggyback on Professor Hebergay's uh, 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 question, you were saying uh, curriculum does not discriminate, but the practice does. Now, this is very, very vague, right? Because you have not said, how, 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 is this, how does this happen, right? You know, like, is this, like, like you, can, you can just say, I'm discriminating against you. I may be, actually, you know, but, 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 but you can just say, but that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean anything to anybody, right? I mean, I mean you can become the pr problem, you know, like in this place, because you are just complaining, and you are not telling what it is. So I think you, you, you probably need to show what kind of practices. Th this is a huge problem in Sri Lankan research. Need to be grounded. Like, like in the United States, like in, 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 in classes, when, when professors take sports examples. You know, I mean, United States soccer team, women's soccer team won the World Cup many times, right? Still, 
uh, sports examples are considered male, right? You know, basketball and so on. I mean, a lot of women don't don't watch this, and and so so how do you how do you when you teach how do you how do you address women, right? So I just gave you one example. You need to be able to bring this out, uh, otherwise it's very hard for anybody to understand. You send discrimination, you know, and and so on, right? And also, it's it's very spread out, like like you talked about 600 students, right? That you talked about. Uh, no, actually, I interviewed only academic staff. So you, uh, you, yeah, said, you it, said six, yeah, it's 600 about women. like uh, yeah. Yeah. So 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 you're going from academics to this to that to you know like and so on. I think you need to focus. I mean, you can say this for example from taking from outside, right? Because I, I was just wondering, you know, like whether you were talking about students or whether you were talking about academics or, or you know and, and and so on so try to try to put put it together i think i'm i'm talking to all of you you know in a in a in a in a, in a sense okay la uh, two more brain brain and alex yeah yes sir you asked uh, to compare this care drain and brain drain right so uh, we chose brain drain uh, as our research topic because I agree that there are consequences of the care drain, but uh, recently brain drain gained uh, more attention than care drain because uh, if I'm not wrong, as I remember, uh, more than 200 professors have uh, left the country and uh, there are uh, many specialists uh, leaving the country. So it has uh, made a discussion within the country uh, how to, uh, go on with these uh, issues uh, within universities and hospitals. So we are experiencing many hospitals uh, lack, uh, many, many hospitals cannot do operations, uh, cannot carry carried out them uh, due to the lack of uh, uh, specialists. So that's why uh, we chose to uh, do this brain drain as our research. I mean, I, I uh, uh Just piggyback, piggy, piggybacking on, on Professor Hebeke's question, uh, is is not having uh, is 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 the uh, reduced service in a hospital much worse than an issue bringing up children? You know, like I mean, I don't I don't necessarily agree with Professor Hebeke about this children issue, but I mean, he 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 he, he brought up an issue, right? And and is that you know, like going back to your your thing, is that discriminatory? to think like that. Uh, no, it's not about discrimination. <laughs> 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 uh, actually, it's an ongoing um, crisis in Sri Lanka. So, and also, uh, still Sri Lankan government haven't taken proper actions to overcome this issue. So. Uh, in our research, uh, we have two more objectives. So our last objective is to implement a national strategy to overcome this issue. So that's, uh, so through this research, we are trying to help uh, policymakers and government, uh, government institutions uh, to give an idea how to implement a strategy or how to implement a policy to uh, retain these uh, valuable human resources within the country. But uh, we do not want to discriminate that. Uh, the, uh, we do not want to compare or discriminate that care drain or brain drain. Uh, uh, my question related to social organization. So I was referring uh, as a social organization in my research is INGOs and NGOs. So most of the uh, INGOs are funded by different countries, and NGOs are uh, sometimes it. Uh, funded by local partners like uh, within this country there are some local fundraising groups uh, funding for their groups so those are the difference between INGOs and I NGOs I was uh, taking uh, data for my uh, research uh, and thank you for the feedback uh, I was not uh, able to explain the data because due to the time uh, time limitation I was unable to explain the data so in my next uh, presentation, I will uh, follow your instruction and I will 
do the correction. Thank you. It's not necessarily best uh, that when it comes to <coughs> gadama uh, in case of her hermeneutics and also deconstruction in case of Derrida, they do not uh, <coughs> coin them as something best. For example, uh, oh, you, yeah, it's, <coughs> it's way of, that's basically deconstruction. If you take deconstruction and uh, hermeneutics, it's a strategy. A strategy cannot be either Western or <laughs> Eastern or uh, uh, Middle East, <laughs> right? You cannot put into a geographical location a strategy, right? <laughs> then um, deconstruction is basically finding all the apparatic relations or internal contradictions in uh, in case of reality or understanding meanings. So uh, here I find uh, that kind of apparatic relations in uh, Nishabhavada or Shunita philosophy, where the uh, emptiness or uh, where the uh, kind of Taoism and other things, that they are actually apparatic and they, they establish hypoosiology. That's my argument. That's what I am bringing up the new knowledge there. Because I would say that that see, they secretly affirm, not that their negation is affirmative. That's what my yes, that's my argument of all of it. Yeah. Uh, my question is to for one is for Chelsea. Uh, you mentioned about uh, this, I think, uh, title Economic Impact of uh, Brain Drain. It was more of a qualitative analysis that you had done. Uh, and I didn't really understand what the economic, how you put in the economic impact. How did you assess the economic impact? Anuradha, do you want to respond first?
also it's useful, yes. But uh, among the women, these uh, platforms are somewhat popular even nowadays. So, um, for the uh, other question you asked, uh, uh, I gathered information from online and offline organizations. So, uh, uh, I had an interview standing all the participants for the study was uh, gathered through uh, women-focused online communities and offline online organizations and uh, before they participated in the study, uh, they, have, uh, they have informed all the uh, procedures and policies. So, and also uh, the study has followed all the required uh, ethical procedures so and so on. So, uh, all the participants uh, will give their informed consent uh, Guaranteeing the anonymity and confidentiality also. Okay, uh, the reason why we chose a qualitative approach is it helps or it enables us to uh, ask questions about human experiences. What the, and we cannot put those uh, experiences into numbers. So and also it helps uh, to uh, get a deeper understanding about. Uh, phenomena, uh, human experiences, uh, patterns, uh, so so on. So that's why we chose a qualitative approach, and uh, because we are interviewing uh, executives from six sectors, and uh, in Sri Lanka there are no clear statistics available to measure brain drain. Uh, so that's the reason why we uh, went for qualitative approach. Okay, one last question. Any anybody comment or question? Ah, fantastic. Here we go. I'm glad I saved this food. Uh, this is for uh, Ms. Sandra that they're doing the sure. virtual way. Uh, I have three questions, but uh, for the first and second one is something like yes or no questions. Okay. Uh, first one is, is there any rights that men have and women don't have? And the second one is, a any, what? any rights that men have that right. women don't have? Okay. Okay. Okay, and the second one is, uh, why all the something like uh, why are the all the things are doing for the women that men also have something like uh, face, that face from their expressions and the repression when I mean, they are going to the social media and the third one is the what the what are the challenges and risks do women face when sharing their experience anonymously on social media in the context of deception and the uh, intent feeling. Fantastic. Okay, it's your turn. Anuradha. Uh, no, not only uh, women, but also men uh, can have difficulties. But uh, in my study, I'm focusing only on uh, women's, uh, women's problems because uh, they, are the, uh, they are most likely to uh, they are most likely subject to the uh, domestic violence and also in pregnancy and also to different deceptions. Uh, so uh, that's the answer for the first two questions. And uh, for the uh, other question, uh, uh, I talked about there are uh, uh, there are consequences and problems for the women to talk about their problems, uh, like uh, like uh, in when when they have problems in speaking in public. So, they, uh, so that's why I support the uh, importance of these anonymous social media platforms. All right. So thank you very much for everyone. Uh, I'm sure you all you didn't get all the answers, but you know that's how the world is. Uh, yeah. Thanks for uh, all the presenters and and everybody who's here. And thank you very much for you know coming with, up with a very very good question. And thanks everyone. Thank you very much, sir, that for such a good procession, that we gained valuable insight to apply to our further research, studies, and expand our knowledge. Now, we would like to invite the chair, Professor Nihal Pereira, and Dr. Tamara Jayasundara, head of the Department of Social Sciences, 
to award the certificates to the presenters. PKG IL Ranasinghe. MACA Vijay Ratna. C.A. Krishantan. Dr. Darshan Kumar. Thank you, sir.